right, today we're going to do an overview of digital portfolio at Dominican University of California. The voice you're listening to is Christina Mays. I am an integrative coach and our digital portfolio specialist. Now my goal is to hopefully convey to you the importance of telling your story, but how? So we're going to discuss the value and purpose of a digital portfolio, how to access resources and support, and ultimately get you started on creating your portfolio. The Dominican experience has four elements, integrative coaching, community engagement, signature work, and digital portfolio. Let's take a look at what is a digital portfolio. Hi, I'm Alyssa, and this is your digital portfolio. Great, what is a digital portfolio? It's a personal website that you build over time. Through your collected work and reflections, a digital portfolio helps you tell your story. It also helps you learn. 70% of college students nationally agree digital portfolios help them make connections between ideas. You'll post things like projects you are proud of, your education and career plans, and experiences in and out of the classroom. So what about my dog? Um, probably not your dog. Julia is an occupational therapy major and included her research on neonatal intensive care. Drake's a dance major and posted videos of his dance performances. Chloanne is an MBA student and posted photos from her internship. Wow, do we do this alone? Nope, you have the support of a career mentor, integrative coach, academic advisor, and peer mentor. Making your digital portfolio is built into your Dominican experience so you won't forget to do it. What about after I graduate? It can help you get a job. More than four in five employers value a digital portfolio because it shows your work and how you're prepared for a career. Claudia was an education student who presented her digital portfolio at a job interview and she got it. Your digital portfolio allows you to come out of college with ways to showcase all of your amazing work. And that's what being a penguin is really all about. So now that we have a kind of like really fun idea of a digital portfolio and how that can translate for all of our different students and all of our different programs. I think it's also nice to consider how the student is at the center of our design in the sense that we have digital portfolio built in to different experiences in and out of classrooms. So for example, we have some college seminars, navigating college, life skills. Within our academic programs, every academic program has their own kind of principles and overview on how they would like to see students utilize a digital portfolio and reflect and showcase their learning for all the different programs. Academic advising, some programs are utilizing digital portfolio as a tool to have a stronger rapport with their students in reviewing their digital portfolio. Integrative coaching and peer mentors. Um, we're like the cheerleaders to cheer you on. If you want feedback, we have drop-in virtual hours to support your development over time. So let's take a pause and consider what does it take to be successful? Who is invested in your future? And who knows your story? So up to this moment right now, who knows your story? Who knows that life that you've lived up to this moment? Who knows the knowledge that you know? Who knows your experiences? At this moment in the overview, I'd like you to pull out a piece of paper or maybe you can type this digitally on your computer. To just note down in these four areas, your purpose, why you're uh, seeking to complete this college degree, support, who has supported your success to get here, showcase, what is one thing that you're really proud of achieving up to this moment in your life? And then let's reflect. What did you learn about yourself with that achievement? So at this point, you can pause the video and just take a couple minutes just to jot down some keywords in these areas. Hmm. So how can you showcase the achievement that you were just reflecting on? How might you demonstrate what you learned from that experience? So here's just a very elaborate overview of all 
the different ways you could showcase, whether it be an academic experience, um, lab or research experience, skills, awards, if you're planning to be a teacher, teaching experience, internship, work, leadership, volunteer, experiential. Really, it's as creative as you want to be with this type of digital outlet. So when we think about videos, presentations, Google Slides, PDF, essays, podcast, artwork, lots of different ways to convey what you learned and really what was a takeaway from those milestones. So why develop a digital portfolio? Reflect on your learning, develop or keep developing and centering that purpose, goal setting, those short, medium, long-term goals, building connections, building those connections on those significant learning moments that bring one back to their purpose, showcasing the knowledge, showcasing all that brilliant work that you've achieved over time, career planning, developing that roadmap to your ultimate success with increasing your employability to demonstrate yourself in telling your story, showcasing your skills and knowledge and the ability to coherently share who you are in a digital context. So let's get started. I'm going to do a Google Eyesight demo. The goal here is to use G Suite, G Suite, Google Suite. So open up a Chrome browser, log into your personal Gmail account. So while you do have a Dominican Gmail account at students.dominican.edu, we encourage you now to utilize a personal Gmail so that you own your eyesight 100%. Upon graduation, eventually your student account will be terminated. This way you get to just keep your good work. If you decide you want to use an alternative platform such as Wix, Weebly, Medium, that's fine, but definitely read the privacy agreement and sharing abilities. All right, so let's go to google.com. Notice which account that you're logged into. Ensure that it's your personal Gmail account. If you would prefer at this time to use your uh, student account, that's fine. There, there is definitely a way to transfer your work over. It's a matter of copying your eyesight and then transferring ownership to a personal account. So either one is fine at this time. So now we'll go to sites. If you do not see that Google app here, you can simply click in and search for sites and you can access that way. What's really cool about new Google Sites, now they have pre-made templates at the top. So you'll notice you can make a blank one, portfolio, class, a help center, a club. And these below are the sites that I've already created and have access to editing and sharing. I'm gonna click on portfolio. And now we have a sample kind of generic layout here. At the top, we're going to add our first and last name. I'm going to add test222 All you need to do is do your first and last name. I'm gonna add our first and last name here. And it's pretty intuitive. If I click on the text box, I can already just edit that text to say like, welcome. I can change the image here. Um, I can manipulate it. I can also just replace the image with one I have on my computer, or I can search one online. Let's select one online. Going to Google image search, A flower. Ooh, that one's nice. Bring that in. And if I click on these three dots, I can add alt text. 
note image of flower. This is an accessibility feature for screen readers for those who are using um, a, a system where it reads the text of the website to the user. Or I could also just select this is a decorative image and I click apply. I can also add a caption to this photo. So for example, if I would like to give the source for this image, I can note that right here, source for image. You always want to cite other people's work and give credit due to copyright laws. Um, let's go to some other basics here. So for pages, we want to ensure we have our about me. I'm going to edit this to be education plan. And if I click on new page, this little plus sign, I'm adding a career plan. Here could be a placeholder for student work. Now notice there are different pages here. We have our home page. We have the about me. And each section that was part of that initial template is still kind of there with some placeholders. Education plan, plain, student work, and then career plan. Now these can move around. So if you decide to change the order, that's fine. And if you want to move something um, to create a sub page, I can move this career plan and nest it into the education plan, or I can move it back out. I can also add a sub page by right clicking and adding a sub page, and I can just add my resume. Now, how this translates at the top, you'll notice that there's a drop down now for that resume. If I go back to our home, and scroll down, I'll show you where you can put a footer now, which is another cool feature. So you can put your email address so that it becomes a footer on each page of your eyesight. So notice how I hyperlinked. So now when someone clicks on that, they'll be able to click right into creating an email with me. And I'll show you if I go to the About Me page, we now have that footer there. Now let's play a little bit with themes, just for a soft introduction here. Um, here are some pre-made thematic layouts. So if I click on vision, level, impression, you get a sense that the text changes, like the, the feel. I can change the complementary colors that go with these different themes. So to show you for emphasis here. See how that kind of pops? Now I can also do the back button. I can undo, but we can only undo so many times. Now, if I chose to delete this, I can, but I'm not gonna get it back. So be mindful about using our undo and redo, and that we can only do it so many times. So we don't want you to lose good work. I'm gonna go back up and use simple. And if I want to adjust that font style, maybe I'll go with heavy, maybe classic. Great, so now we have like the basic skeleton of our site. Here we want to adjust our sharing settings. So as you can see, I am logged into my Dominican account. If I change here, so if you're in your personal Gmail, you will not see Dominican. This is only if you're logged into your Dominican account. So if I go here, I'll go to anyone with the link. So anyone with the link can now access my Google site. If it was restricted, so let's say I had it as Dominican, 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 only students could see this. 
like if you're in the student domain, it would be at students.dominican, only students would be able to see my eyesight. But you want uh, faculty to also see your work, and they're on a different domain. They're on at dominican.edu. So it's important to have it as anyone with the link. Then you can have overall accessibility with all those on different domains. And I hope that does make sense. Um, if you would prefer to work in a mode where you are, let's say, kind of unpublished and you only want to share it with one other person, you can do that. That would look more like this. It would look like restricted and we would only be adding specific people. So let's say I'm only sharing it with this person and I only want them to see at, in a viewer sense. So it's nice to know that there's a couple different ways to do our sharing. So I'm going to leave it as anyone with the link and now we're going to publish. And one of the key takeaways here is that I want to ensure that you grab the correct URL to share with others. So we do not want to share something that looks like this that ends with the word edit. If you shared that with another, they would then become an editor on your site and they would be able to edit and change. We don't want that. To share your URL, you're going to copy here and copy that URL. So if I go up here and paste that URL, here we are. Okay, so now we have our published site. Let's upload a, a few things. So to insert, let's say, an essay, with using Google, we want to, let's say, upload a PDF to your Google Drive, and we can insert directly from our drive. Here we go. So I'm inserting a PDF, and I can adjust that PDF. Now, any artifact that you put in. You want to have your justification statement. Why is this item that you have showcased on your portfolio, why is it relevant? Ensure that you cite the source and of course give yourself credit if it's your work. Um, the date, time, and maybe a reflection on that learning. But we wanna know the relevance of the why. So another way that we can insert content is to go here. We can insert a presentation. We can insert our presentation. So note the title. And what's also fantastic is that we can get a sense of what this looks like preview mode before we publish. So we can see that presentation, we can see that work, and let's say this is a 27 page essay, your viewer can click here and pop out that attachment. Make sure that you have the sharing properties on this document within the Google Drive updated with the sharing settings so that we can read your good work. So I think that looks good. I'm going to move into publish mode. To this publish mode, we can see what the edits are going to look like and then go ahead and move to published. These layouts right here show you that you can you can incorporate some pre-made layouts too on the side that you want to highlight. It's really cool, very usable. You can bring in YouTube videos, slides. You could have a Google form embedded, a calendar. It's a lot of fun. Make sure to make use of our drop-in hours. So if I go back here to our presentation, 
We have additional resources online. So if you find us, dominican.edu, search for a digital portfolio. We have a support site. We have student examples and guidelines and prompts for your about me statement. We can't say it enough. We are so excited to see where your journey with Dominican will take you. Please stay connected and follow us on Instagram at DUC Student Success Center. You may request a personal consultation at digitalportfolio at dominican.edu. And again, visit us online. We're going to have virtual drop-in hours. We have a bunch of different student examples showcased, workshops, and much more.